نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers, including the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. As we greet you on this, the 22nd day, of the month of Muharram in the year 1446 from the town or the city of Johobaru in Malaysia, which is the southernmost part of Malaysia adjoining Singapore. We greet you with Assalamu Alaikum <coughs> wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. It is a time of Fajr. And we have just completed the Salat al-Fajr. And uh, today it's al wida <laughs> We are completing the visit to Johobaru. And uh, after breakfast, uh, we will return to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, inshallah. This has been a blessed visit uh, to Johobaru. We had a, a very large number of those who came from Singapore, including my very old, old friend, Ahlan Mahmoud, and his wife, and uh, uh, others from Singapore. Uh, we have a team that came from southern Bulgaria, um, very nice team. Um, and uh, my wife Aisha and I will visit uh, southern Bulgaria, inshallah, in September, my second visit. Uh, we had two who came from Germany, originally from Pakistan. We had Shershu from Bangladesh. And uh, uh, where is Gregoire? He's not here. From, from France, who is the man who does all the proofreading of all my books, but now living in Indonesia. We have Yanti from Indonesia. And I don't know which ones I've missed out. So it has been a, it has been a very uh, beneficial visit to Johobaru. Uh, we're staying in a, in a resort inside of a golf club. And I'm not too comfortable with golf. <laughs> but uh, it has been a pleasant stay. And we are grateful to our brother here in uh, Johobaru, who has been very uh, hospitable to us. I won't mention his name. And uh, we are planning uh, to try to repeat this again next year, inshallah. Maybe at the same time, at the end of July next year. So wherever you are, and you listen to this uh, brief uh, address, uh, and you want to join us next year, stay in touch <laughs> and make your plans to travel and we can have a little, another very enjoyable stay. The lecture that was given on Saturday night on uh, Rome and Constantinople and the law of war in Islam was a very important subject. By no means have I completed the topic, but I've given you the heart of the subject. And uh, it is now time for us to say goodbye and go back to Kuala Lumpur. But this morning, we waited for Salatul Fudge, and we looked in the sky to determine what is the time for us to perform the Salatul Fudge. Only in Kampung, Kampung means village. Kampung is a Malay word meaning village, Kampung. Perhaps only in Kampung people look at the sky anymore. <laughs> Nobody looks at the sky anymore. <coughs> and I want to revisit this subject for wherever you are in the world. What is the correct time for performing the morning prayer at the Salat al Fajr in the Sharia? Sharia means the sacred law. 
which came with the last prophet in Islam, the last prophet in Islam. There are many, many, many prophets who came before him in the religion of Islam. And these are the last Muslims, and there are Muslims who came before this Ummah. <laughs> All those schoolboys don't seem to understand that. What is the law of, of, of Salat or prayer for the morning prayer in the Sharia? Sharia means sacred law. And before we answer that question, let us remember that Allah sent the Quran as al haqqul yakin meaning absolute truth unquestionable truth. The head must bow in submission to the true Quran. And if you do not bow in submission to the Quran, you are not in Islam. Because Islam means submission to Allah, not defying Him. And so Absolute truth is in the Quran. Absolute truth is not in the Hadith. No. Whoever holds that view, I pity you on judgment day for betraying the Quran. Absolute truth is not in the Sirah. No. I pity you on judgment day for betraying the Quran. And Allah not only sent the Quran with absolute truth, he says something more. He has sent the Quran to function as Al Furqan. And there is a surah of the Quran entitled Surah Al Furqan. And it is in this surah that there is a complaint. The fur Furqan means that which distinguishes truth from falsehood that which separates truth from falsehood. So the Qur'an has come to sit in judgment over Hadith, over Sirah, and over everything else to distinguish truth from falsehood. That is al Furqan. But <laughs> when Muslims forsake the Qur'an, they forsake the Qur'an, means they no longer turn to the Qur'an for absolute truth. No! My race is more important to me than the Qur'an. My supreme loyalty is to my race. I was born superior. <laughs> ah, yes. I am, super I am Malay, I'm superior to the Chinese. <laughs> this is, I am Turkish, I'm superior to the Armenians. This is the road of shaitan. You are servants of shaitan when you honor and, re and you, your supreme loyalty is to your race. I am better than him. You created me from fire, you created him from clay. Not only do you betray the Qur'an when you do not recognize absolute truth in the Qur'an, and you recognize absolute truth elsewhere, but also you betray the Qur'an when you do not turn to the Qur'an for the Qur'an to function as al furqan that which distinguishes truth from falsehood. And there is in Surah al Furqan. Remember, there is a surah of the Quran renamed Surah al Furqan. Yes. And in that surah, there is this complaint. The Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, is complaining to Allah. And Allah chose to put that dua in the Quran. What is the dua of the Prophet? I want my critics to listen. Rasul and the Messenger of Allah said, he's complaining, Ya Rabb, O oh my Rabb, my Rabb, my Lord God, 
Inna qawmi takhazu hadha al-Qur'an mahjura. My people have forsaken this Qur'an. My people have turned away from this Qur'an and deserted this Qur'an. Meaning, they no longer turn to the Qur'an for the Qur'an to function as al-Furqan, to separate truth from falsehood. No, they don't do that. And this complaint is in the Qur'an. So let us now, this morning, briefly turn to the Qur'an as absolute truth and turn to the Qur'an as al-Furqan to determine the time of the morning prayer or Salatul Fajr. And the first thing <coughs> we learn is that in the month of Ramadan, <laughs> Allah has given us a Sharia for fasting. And this one has replaced the one that came before in Islam. That was also Islam. And this is also Islam. That previous law, which is from sunset to sunset, is mansukh for us. Mansukh means cancelled, abrogated, changed. So for us it is mansukh, but not for them. They still have that law. And that law will remain for them until Qiyamah. Only schoolboys will change it, <laughs> not people with knowledge. And uh, that law was that you fast from sunset to sunset. And we have now a new Qibla. The old Qibla is Mansukh for us. Mansukh <coughs> means cancel, abrogated, change. And our new Qibla is the Kaaba in Makkah. But that Qibla, Allah says in the Quran, is still valid for them until Qiyamah. Only a schoolboy will change it. <laughs> because schoolboys, you know, they have no knowledge. And <laughs> there is a hadith of the Prophet in which he warned us. One of the signs of the last day is that knowledge will become scarce and jahal or ignorance will prevail. That knowledge will become scarce and ignorance will prevail in the world. This is one of the signs of the last day. So now then, in the new Sharia which came for us, not for them, for us, Allah said, Ba'adawuzu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim. He said, Kulu wa shrabu, eat and drink during the nights of fasting. Hatta yatabayyana lakumul al khaytu al-abyad. Min al khaytil aswad min al fajr. I have explained this subject 500,000 times already. Yes, and my students are familiar. But there are others coming who never heard it before, or others who are not too busy, too busy to learn. So we have to keep on repeating and repeating and repeating. Eat and drink until the white thread of dawn is distinct from the black thread. When the verse came down, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made no effort to give an explanation of the verse. No, he remained silent until until one of the companions was having difficulty with the white thread and the black thread. And he went to the Prophet to ask him. Only then did the Prophet, alayhi respond. 
Why did he wait? I leave that question for you to think and answer. You know, my teacher used to say, he said, I'm not going to put you on my back and climb the mountain. I'm going to teach you to climb the mountain yourself. What, what a teacher that man was. Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari, the master as a teacher. So, the Prophet Islam then gave the explanation, but it was not an explanation, it was an interpretation, ta'wil. Explanation is tafsir, but interpretation is ta'wil. And the master of ta'wil is Khidr alayhi salam. And the most important time of all for ta'wil is Akhir zaman and that is Surah al kaf of the Qur'an. So in Akhir zaman you have the imperative of turning to ta'wil, interpretation, to understand the world. So the Prophet said, when Allah said this, what this is what he meant. When he said, eat and drink until the white thread of dawn is distinct from the black thread, what he meant by that was, eat and drink until the light of the day is distinct from the darkness of the night. So the Fajr al-Sadiq and the Fajr al-Kazib don't play any role in this at all. No. It is when the light of the day is distinct from the darkness of the night. So this is after Fajr al-Sadiq and Fajr al-Kazib and so on. Don't come to us with that nonsense because it's not applicable. That's why I use the word nonsense. It's not applicable because we wait until the light of the day is distinct. That is, hatta yatabayyana lakum. It must be distinct. The light of the day must be distinct from the darkness of the night. Then the fast will begin. So can we perform the Fajr prayer, the Salat al fresh, the morning prayer before that time? <laughs> eh? No. People are still eating the morning feed, the Fatur, and you have the Salat in the masjid? This is a schoolboy, not someone in knowledge. <laughs> eh? And so now we know from this verse of the Quran, that in the month of Ramadan, you cannot perform the Salat al Fajr in the month of Ramadan until the light of the day is distinct from the darkness of the night. You can call the Azan before that, but the Salat will be at this time. Now then, if this is the time of Salat in Ramadan, can it change after Ramadan? No. That's all. It has to be uniform all through the year. So then we came to the conclusion, based on the Quran, absolute truth in the Quran, that the time of the morning prayer or Salat or Fajr commences when the light of the day is distinct from the darkness of the night. If I am wrong, correct me. Now then, let us now turn to the Quran as Furqan, that which separates truth from falsehood. And when we go to the Hadith, we find a Hadith which says that Jibra'il alayhi salam came on two consecutive days and he led the Salat five times a day. On the first day he led the Salat at the first time possible 
And on the second day, he led the Salat the last time possible. And he said, O oh, Muhammad, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, these are the times of prayer between this time and this time. When it came to Salatul Fajr <laughs> on the first day, when he was finished performing the Salat of Fajr, the Hadith says, if you put your hand in front of your face, you could not see your own hand, indicating absolutely no light at all in the sky, even after the Salat is over. It should be clear, even for a schoolboy, it should be clear that this hadith is in conflict with the Quran. But there are those who are not prepared to accept that a hadith can ever be in conflict with the Quran, particularly if it is Bukhari or Muslim. So these are people who are pitifully dis misguided and they need to be left behind. Left behind because they are a waste of time. And when you talk to them and you teach them, as I've been doing for 25 years or more, they have wax in their ears, they refuse to listen. So they are a waste of time. And we just leave them where they are and we move forward, recognizing that when we use the Quran as Al Furqan, it becomes clear that this hadith is in conflict with the Quran. And so we will, we will refrain from performing the Salat al Fajr according to the hadith. That when the Salat is over, if you put your hand in front of your face, you can't see your hand. That is the hadith. That is the hadith. Let us repeat it. That when you perform the Salat al Fajr according to that hadith at the first time of the prayer, when the prayer is finished, if you put your hand in front of your face, you cannot see your hand. And we say that is in conflict with the Quran. So those misguided people who want to follow the hadith, and we cannot teach them, we just leave them where they are. And we proceed to be faithful to the Quran. This is what I wanted to share with you this morning. And before we leave, we want to thank Allah for this blessed opportunity to be in Johobaru. I want to recognize my assistant, uh, Imam Hasbullah, who did a great job in organizing this visit. And may Allah bless him for his hard work. And may Allah bless all the others who drove their cars from Kuala Lumpur to come here. And bless all those from Singapore who contributed to, to, for us to rent all these villas here and all those who are involved in organizing this visit to Johobaru, which has been not only so beneficial, but so enjoyable. The most enjoyable thing about this visit to Johobaru was the large number of children we had. Oh my gosh. We had so many children, and the children brought joy and brought happiness to me and to so many others. So may Allah grant that we may have it once more, inshallah, next year. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.